Hello, this is Eric of Spark eTech and welcome to my review of the XBOT GO gimbal. This gimbal was provided for review, no money was exchanged, and this is my full honest opinion. It is January 15, 2024 and I'm using the newest software. So stay tuned to see how my experience is including some software bugs I found that are reported to the company so they can fix them. And yes, there are updates coming for self-person tracking to improve your experience and group tracking. So watch for that in a future relook of this gimbal. Now let's get started. Sparky Tech and Review. Yeah. When using this gimbal, you probably want your phone case off of your phone because it uses an AI algorithm that is very processor intensive. Your phone will heat up. When I left the case on my phone, what happens is it reset my phone because the buttons press the side. So yeah. Just take your case off and then put it in. Now when it comes to inserting your phone, you'll see the arrow here and that's the direction you want your phone to be with lined up like this. Now I'm going to do that right now. If I double tap this, it'll straighten out the phone. Tap the other one once and it'll flip the phone the other way. And if I want to flip it back vertically, I'll press that one more time again. In gimbal mode, our control for record and stop record is right here. And in gimbal mode, we also have this for zoom in and zoom out. Now, gimbal mode is a different app than this one. For recording sports, we're gonna use the Xbot Go app. And for recording, for zoom in and zoom out manually, we're gonna use the Gimbal Pro. And we also have the QR codes to download these two with instructions. We also have our charging port right here and it's USB type C and includes a charging cable. Battery life is about three to four hours and those lights are not flashing. They're flashing on camera, but not in person. It also comes with this that is attachable or detachable. And here is a little lanyard that I placed on it that comes with to make sure we're not gonna drop everything by accident. These are the feet for the gimbal. So it can sit on your desk and it mounts with a quarter inch thread, which is 6.35 millimeters. So that is a standard thread used in the camera and video equipment industry. Just screws on and it has rubber feet in the bottom so it doesn't slide around your desk. And we sit it down just like so. Now let's continue on. When it comes to Gimbal Pro software right here, I'm gonna click that right away. Let's see how this works. If your gimbal can't be found because you were in your other software, what you're gonna do is power on and power off your gimbal. And this will allow you to reconnect. And right now it's not finding it. So I'm gonna just do that. So I'm gonna click the power button on my gimbal, which is right down here. And now I'm gonna power back on. Right now we're in the Gimbal Pro software, but by default it is set to camera when we first open it, so let's change that. Now we can see that little red record button, which I can now set this up and press record. And we are now recording. And the cool part is now I can zoom in and zoom out and do my vertical video just like that and simply pan one direction and the other. Now what if I want it horizontal video? I'm just going to press the stop button, which is the trigger at the back. Now I'm going to flip my phone the other way. Right here and to give it that nice little standard type video. And let's line up first. And one thing we can do just to make sure you know, here is our zoom in and zoom out trigger. So I'll press record right here, right now. So right now I am recording with my mobile phone. We can see it on my camera as well. And that's pretty cool. And I can tip side to side and this gimbal is keeping it straight and upright. Cool that we can do that. Now let's zoom in and out. We can see that zoom right in like that's, that's quite crazy actually. That's just using the software on this gimbal. And that's the Gimbal Pro software, not the sports tracking one. This is just the simple software of the gimbal. I find that quite intriguing and 
useful. Now, if I had the wireless Bluetooth remote that's coming out, that would be fantastic. Then I can control it at a distance without holding this gimbal or just leaving it on a tripod and not even touch the controls. Here's our software. And if I want to go into it, I can choose the mode I want to choose. So there's that. And if I want to record myself, I'm going to be recording off the back camera. That means I can't see this side of the screen. You just have to know where your camera is and it can follow you after you set the mode. In the case of tracking myself, I will just choose that mode. So single mode as it's already highlighted. And I'm going to press the next key. But before I do that for tracking, I need to flip the camera to the other view right here. Now I can press record. Of course, I also want to show what the difference is between me holding this and recording right now, including the sound internally versus me holding this with this particular mobile phone. This is the Xiaomi 12X. So let's see if you can still hear me the same with my external audio device right here. And this is the Holy Land Lark Max. And just having this as a proof of concept, it does honestly work with external microphones. So that is cool. And just to verify, so yeah, that is that. And yes, it can track down, but we do have some limitations. We'll get back to that later, but first let's get to our sporting event. What this gimbal is really made for. Right now I'm tracking with the first person tracker mode and you'll see that I brought a soccer ball to see if it'll track me in soccer mode for person tracking. And it is tracking me quite the distance way. I am now 15 plus feet away. And I don't know if it will get me from very far away or not. And this is about 30 feet away or so. I know in a sports mode it can track from a very far distance. However, it doesn't is beyond me. Now let's see what happens when I go down. And let's see what happens if it'll track me up. That's one of the limitations I found is tracking upwards, but did seem to move upwards. Let's go back down again. Nice. And back up. It's going partially. Can you go up more? And I think we've met our limitation for this mode. Let's see if this will track me. Just playing around with the ball. <laughs> As if I'm the soccer player, I don't know. Can I do it? Well, seems not too bad. Set the mode to small area and it looks like it lost me. And that was our little test to see if this could track me kicking the ball around. Let's see some game of hockey. And that was the gimbal automatically zoomed in. I am curious though if I can do it manually. No. It does everything itself. And for those wondering, I'm actually hand holding this gimbal. Right now we're testing handheld the footage and see how smooth or unsmooth it is. And we're gonna go to the gimbal here right away and see the difference. Using the software Gimbal Pro to see if there's any difference. And of course I'm walking at a decent speed to actually put this to the ultimate test. In the case of Android mobile phone, which I have, I had to swipe like this and double tap down there. And now I can exit. So this is something you may face, but now you know how to get out of it. Another issue I have with the software is, you see all these files, none of these are available on my phone. I can't view them until I click on manage and I have to select it and then I have to click download. And when I download it says to photos. Some of the files copy to movies. Not a bad place at least, we can find that fairly easy. But what it's talking about is to camera pictures area where I have a clutter fest of video files. Now one thing I suggested is they make a folder like such and it downloads that folder. Though it'd be more convenient if the files were simply there rather than having to click download. When I was watching the hockey game it was behind 
glass that was scratched up with some posts. So considering all the blockages, it actually did better than I thought it would. Having the Bluetooth remote to press record and stop at a distance away without holding this thing would be nice to have, of course. And that means if I were to film a game and I want to record specifically something and I put it to Gimbal Pro, I could actually zoom in and zoom out and just control everything with the remote control if I really wanted it my way. Now when doing sports tracking and when doing self tracking, I didn't find vertical format worked. We had to do the regular format for tracking modes. Any questions, leave them down below. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a most wonderful day. And to end this video, this is slow-mo using the Gimbal Pro software. Don't know what you'd use it for, but it does give a different kind of effect.